here with the latest on what American officials have learned about the crash is Congressman Peter King of the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman King, thanks so much for joining us this morning. The New York Times reporting that Egypt air officials say the plane that crashed was once spray painted by airport workers with graffiti in Arabic. As you heard me say, it read, we will bring this plane down. What can you tell us about that report? Is this connected? Well, you know, it is two years ago, so there's perhaps not a direct connection, but what it does show, Jake, is the extent of the uh, Islamist threat at the uh, airports from insiders. It also showed the uh, anger toward uh, General Sisi, and uh, so you a uh, you know, combination of anti-Sisi plus the uh, Islamist movement, the ISIS movement, and the fact that the insiders at the airports all over the world, but especially in countries like Egypt, uh, that, that is, to me, the, a, a greater threat to us than passengers bringing bombs onto a plane. It's people behind the scenes, those who have access to the plane, the airport workers, the cleaners, the scrubbers, anyone who gets, who again, uh, does not face the same scrutiny as uh, passengers do. They have access, and that, and, and that is the real threat here. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would think that that would be right. There were uh, reports of Arabic graffiti on other planes, including four EasyJet aircraft, in France, and I know uh, at Charles de Gaulle Airport and in France, uh, there was a move a few months ago to get rid of a bunch of airport workers right. who had suspected ties to Islamic extremists. Is this still a threat even after all those firings? Oh, it is. I mean, you figure they have about 85, 90,000 employees at the airport, and this was like 70 or 80 that were removed. Uh, you have to assume that there's others there that they were not able to detect. I mean, this was a really a, a late development by the French to realize the threat they faced. So I would say that, uh, yes, we have to definitely be concerned that uh, more were there. Also in our own country, and we've done a lot to correct it. We probably have a million people uh, who have access uh, to planes at our, at our airports. And there was an uh, Inspector General's report, the Department of Homeland Security, last year, which said there were a large number uh, had not been properly vetted. Now, there's a lot done, and uh, it's much better with the TSA and Homeland Security. But this is an ongoing situation we have to monitor because of the access that these people would have to, you know, to the plane. So really, it's almost impossible to have too much security. That, to me, that behind the scenes, inside a threat, is the one we have to be most concerned about. We're doing a much better job here in the U.S. France, obviously, was a little late getting started. And as far as other countries around the world, uh, they come nowhere near the standards that we have here in the U.S. And, and what's the latest uh, that you can tell us in terms of what officials think might have happened to this plane. Uh, the last I heard, the president of Egypt, uh, General Sisi, had said that all options are still possible. What's your understanding of the latest? Yeah, well, again, this is you know, unofficial, but I, I would say that right now the indicators are that if, if you tip the scales, it's toward terrorism. But the longer it goes without the responsibility being claimed, it also could be a uh, malfunction on the plane itself, an electrical malfunction. But I think as more and more of the debris is collected and testing is done, we should find out sooner rather than later what this was. I think on these investigations, by the way, something like this, we always have to start off with the premise that terrorism is the most likely uh, option and then work our way back from that. Not say that for certain that it's terrorism, but say that that's the most likely and then, you know, work our way back. The official spokesman of ISIS released an audio message yesterday, but in that message there was no claim uh, of, of responsibility for the attack. Uh, what do you make of that? It could be several things. One, that could have been recorded before they were certain who actually carried this out. ISIS does not have the same type of command and control that al-Qaeda had. So this could have been a local affiliate of ISIS that did it. It could have been another Islamist group. And before, a, uh, again, an uh, uh, acknowledgment is made, they want to make sure exactly who did it, how it was done. But again, uh, it's, you know, and there's any number of hypotheses out there. It could have been lone wolves, for all we know. I want to ask you about another subject. There's legislation. Uh, on Capitol Hill that would let the families of those who were killed or wounded on 9-11 sue the kingdom of Saudi Arabia for any possible role in the terrorist attack on 9-11. Yeah. That bill passed the Senate unanimously on Tuesday despite President Obama's veto threat. It now goes to the House where you're a chief sponsor of the legislation. Now White House officials have said that the president opposes the bill because he's concerned it could set a, a dangerous precedent in terms of foreign individuals suing the United States. If that concern is unfounded, as you and others maintain, why do you think the president opposes this legislation? 
Well, Jake, you know, this was thoroughly debated, and, you know, there was an initial concern. So this bill is so finely drawn and tailored. Senator Cornyn in the Senate did an outstanding job. My staff is in work with his and also with Shaman Goodlatte of the House Judiciary Committee. And this is very finely drawn to say that lawsuits lawsuit can only be brought against the government uh, if there's evidence that that government was responsible uh, in any way for a terrorist attack on another nation. This is not going to open up to all lawsuits. We're talking about a very specific type of threat. A specific type of uh, crime. And uh, so to me, this is a, uh, uh, the president, I think, is overreacting to the Saudis now. In fairness to the president, there are some ongoing uh, operations that we're working with the Saudis on. He may feel it's going to hurt us diplomatically, but we have to do both because, listen, these, these families, I know these families. Terry Strada, her husband Tommy, was killed that day. His father, Ernie, was a mayor in my district. Ernie Strada, great guy. These are families that should know what happened. And if the government of Saudi Arabia is responsible, then that should come out. This is not going to compromise any uh, intelligence at all. And the Saudis have to realize that while right now they are cooperating with us, probably much more for their own good, they're doing it. They realize they have to because of the threat. But that can't wipe away, if they have any responsibility at all, for what happened back on 9-11. They have to assume that responsibility. If there's no responsibility, they have nothing to worry about.